Welcome to Froning and Friends. We have a special guest with us right now. She probably won't last more than a couple minutes, but go ahead. Tell them who you are. Lakeland. Lakeland? Hmm? How old are you going to be in two weeks? How many is that? Four. Four. Ain't this. Four. Ain't this. Ain't this. That's fantastic. You want to sing again? You want to do your ABCs again? No, I wish I You want to count to ten? Half a farm, half a farm. Oh. Have a farm. Is that a song? Yeah. It's uh, Old MacDonald. Oh, oh, Old MacDonald had a farm. With a G.I. Joe? G.I. Joe. It's a good version. That's all, Lakeland. Okay, we could change the words. It could be like, uh, Mayhem had a Ted. E I E I O. Here a Ted, there a Ted, everywhere a Ted, Ted. Ted? Yeah, you like Ted. Quit playing with that baby. Who's your favorite CrossFitter? Your dad or Ted? Ted and Dad. That's what I thought. Ted and Dad. Oh, Ted and Dad. Who's your favorite person? Lily and Emma. Lily and Emma? Oh, that's good. I'll take a back seat to that. Yeah. your cousins. Are you done? Do you know what kind of birthday party you're going to have? A Shopkins birthday. Shopkins, no, you're having a oh. you're having a unicorn. No, unicorn. I want Shopkins birthday. Okay. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll just make a hard unicorn pivot to whatever, <laughs> whatever Shopkins is. <laughs> I don't really know what Shopkins is, to be honest. Well, no, you better figure it out by. <laughs> I'd say that that would be a priority moving forward. Oh, in a bar, oh, you a have Barbie a Barbie car. car. You have a Barbie Corvette. You have, a, you have a princess fleet at the house, I believe. You've pretty much trashed the uh, princess. What do you want to say? The transmission? I think. What did you say? She. The motors. Gotcha. Well, yeah. That's pretty she, tough she, for she a four-year-old. You. Yeah, you. Wow, that's great. a Barbie motorcycle. Yeah. That'd be pretty Here, cool. Go that on the hey, Ellie. Couch over there. Yes. No. Why do you smell like an old woman right now? Well, are you kidding me? What is going on? Like you, you always do not. like in general terms, like you always smell like really nice and like. Are you serious right like now? A, like a thirty-year-old <laughs> woman, like and you. S- I smell like, like coconut. What did you do? No, what did you, you put on? I do not smell like an old woman. You do. You're just like no. Wh- I, Look, I can't hear, but I can smell. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. I think I smell like coconuts. I think it's like oil of old lady or something. <laughs> Isn't that what that's called? Would you know? Like huh? silver? Smell it. Uh, I I would. That's like. Like what do I smell like? Say coconut. Say like an old lady. Coconut. <laughs> nah. <laughs> she pleads a fifth. I actually made all of that up. Wow. So. You ha- I was in full panic. I, I know. I, was I don't about actually to just... smell anything. I don't either. So. I was like, is my shirt crusty? No. No, it's you're clean. fine. It's okay, fine. We're, we're good. fine. And everything's fine. We're all fine. Did you know I got some random facts today? We random haven't had a good, like, solid. I yeah, wanna... why don't we have a computer? Yeah. yeah we're back in our normal uh, This is uh, cool. Spot. Well, well, this is cool. It feels good. Instead of... I feel weird. <laughs> this is making me feel yeah, old. The barn. Instead of yeah. trying to, you know, look, I, I like being able to read big letters. Yeah. <laughs> Second podcast bad. with Kay Miller over here on the right. Producer, Producer Miller. Producer in the house. Hey guys. we got to come up with a cool name. Producer <laughs> okay. KM. Yeah. KM. Mighty What's wrong with Mighty Miller? Mighty Miller's good. I kind of like Mighty Miller. Because Mighty Miller time. Yeah, I like that. Keep, I think that's, that's solid. Keep it going, you know? Is that solid? Is that a Yeah. Yeah. Sure. We'll Mighty just call Miller. it away every time she interjects Miller time. Miller it's time. Miller time. Oh. I don't think we can use that. Oh. Probably not. Oops. Probably not. Mighty Miller time. Mighty oh. Miller time. We'll yeah. see if they come after MMT? us. MMT? M M M uh, yeah, MMT time. Well Monster's already coming after I was us. Say. So. Wow, yeah. We don't need Miller too. What's that about? Jeez. Oh, Being crushed by the giant corporations. Yeah, I don't know if we're allowed to we I was gonna say probably, probably wouldn't bring that up right now, but we'll talk about probably that not. at some point if it's <laughs> we can if edit it, that if out. It yeah, we're gonna leave it. We're gonna leave it. <laughs> okay, true Moving or, on. True or false. I'm not even gonna give you the fact, I'm gonna see if you know. True or false. Wow. Does it matter what color underwear major league baseball umpires wear? I'm is sure, that regulated I'm sure it or not? Does or else you wouldn't, you wouldn't ask be the asking the question. Yeah. Stop overthinking it. No, yeah, no. I'm, just, I'm gonna say true. And what color do you think it would be? I'm sure it's uh, orange. Black. <laughs> they have to wear black while on the job in case they split their pants. Well, there you go. I so mean, if you were wondering, Kristen, I don't. You can fact that, check that. I don't know. That's if practical. It's accurate, but um, I, I don't think well. so, Tim. <laughs> I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> okay. I don't know about that. Sounds accurate. What do you think the strongest muscle relative to size in the body is? 
as long as it's muscle relative to size. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, babe, <laughs> let's come on. Just keep moving past. Just moving on. Um, I'm going to say, um, do, I don't, do, the strongest do, do. muscle. Is your yeah. eye? You're she can inter- Nah. It's not your no? eyes? Nah. Oh. Uh, I'm going to say your tongue. Yep. Was that why it. you stuck your tongue out? <laughs> yep. Oh. <laughs> I just licked Relative the mic. I didn't mean to do that, actually. Gross. Ah. Oh, yeah. It's a little, uh, whatever. Anyway, those are your facts today. Are those true, Kristen? Evidently, the the underwear fact is true. Nice. Man, well on it. See? Largest muscle in your, or strongest <laughs> muscle in your body relative to its size. <laughs> wow. Is the tongue. Um, my dad, when he was in, uh, speaking of tongues, when he was in. Speaking in tongues? Or speaking <laughs> <of> tongues? <laughs> I see what he did there. Let's have that conversation. Uh, no. <laughs> when he always says when well, he was a poor uh, college student in law school, he would go to the store and buy tongue and cook it. And he Beef lived, tongue? Well, I don't know. Cow, yeah, tongue? cow tongue. tongue. And he said, like, it has, like, the taste buds on it. It's so gross. No. And he said um, his roommates, like, they all lived together. And he said he would, like, cook and clean for them if they got him through law school, whatever. Um, so he prepared tongue one time in a skillet. And the dude comes out and goes, I'm not eating that. And you're throwing away the pan. Because <laughs> the guy yeah, saw the tongue. He was like, know. no way. I don't know anything about that. But just I think about where a cow's tongue is all the no, time. No, you can see the taste buds. Like, if you go to, like, the, like, you know, I mean, Jewish they just, delis. They like, just eat grass. Or grain. But could yeah, you but chew a like taste bud? Reach I couldn't. Back there, you I know. Like they eat I feel like if it was excrement. a dog's tongue, it'd be different. I don't know. I it just, doesn't sound all that's right. That's a texture thing. That's like, can you eat octopus when you see the little suction cups? Cal- I'm not calamari. into that. I can't. I like calamari. Yeah, but the ones that have the no, tentacles with the I little like. I can't do the the ones with. I can't do it like when it looks like an actual. Oct- do you eat? Hey, speaking of that, vegetarian. Oh yeah. Episcopalian. <laughs> Episcopalian. <laughs> do you is squid? Can you eat squid? It's not a fish, right? It's not a mammal, right? It's not like. Calamari. Calamari for Kristen. Do you know how to sure. grill calamari? No, You're gonna have to no, that's no, gonna no be idea. in your skill set now. No idea. So the, the strongest muscle based on its weight is actually in your jaw. Oh, okay. But that's not size. No. So that's something else. Based on It says like compared to like depending on what you're judging it strength by, obviously. Hmm. There's okay. like a whole list of different Interesting. Things. I was a good call. You saying I was a good guess, I think. Because that's seems that pretty would be strong, small and I don't know. I don't know. Okay, well there you go. Well, anyway, so today I was thinking, uh, I was listening to Tony Robbins this week, and he had some solid stuff. And I Tony, thought this look, everybody. <laughs> Tony <laughs> Robbins. I've never heard what anything. What is that? that uh, Darren, is that Tommy solid. Boy? Look, everybody, it's Tony <laughs> Robbins. I've never. Look it up. No, it's Tony. I'm pretty sure. I've never listened to anything he's that Tony the whole Robbins. Quote. He's got some really, Has really he got some good stuff. So I wanted to cross-reference Tony with some Silver Solutions today. Oh wow! Okay. Tommy Boy, 1995. Got it. Oh. Told you. What's Gold he say? Star. He was talking to David Spade. Yeah. He goes, "Look, everybody, it's <laughs> Tony Robbins." Because he's like trying to give a pep talk or something like that. Uh, th- there was a guy that came out to a workout the other day that we met, a business owner in Nashville, and we got to talking just a little bit. And Birmingham. No, he came down from Nashville. And when we were swimming at the lake. Oh, okay. And and he said something about listening to Tony Robbins. And he's like, I know, it kind of sounds weird. It's but funny because I, I got a lot that, of good out of like, that. That's and why I never listened to it until Birmingham, like. But yes. Oh. Yeah. The, the dude who owns the ring company? Yeah. From, oh, you're thought, right. Never mind. I'm sorry. Oh. You're, I stand corrected. Well, I, I thought it was from the other conversation. Oh. with one of the guys from oh, Birmingham. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't. I have no idea who Tony Robbins is. It may He's sound really dumb, but I have never – I couldn't pick the guy out of a crowd. I, I don't heard. know what he looks like. He – I mean, Kristen can pull up an image for you. But, I mean, he's, like, huge in, like, motivational speaking. And, yeah, now I that you I mean, he's, like, a that, billionaire, and, and he's – Hearing that quote makes sense. His podcast is, like, um, top five or something yeah. like that. Oh, awesome. And so I never yeah. really listened to it because uh, it's not like I associated a negative stigma. It was just one of those things that I was like, oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, Tony, Tony Robbins. Robbins. <laughs> there he is. Look, everybody, it's Tony it's Robbins. It's Tony Robbins. Very uh, good. But he, like, I've been listening to some of his stuff lately, and he'll, like, just drop these huge bombs, like, in a pause way, and you're like, wow, that's really a big deal. So right. I kind of want to cross-reference them with some silver solutions and see what you guys have to say about it. Did you write them down? Nah, I'm just going to no. She's winging it. No, yes, I wrote them down. Of course you wrote them down. Okay. I didn't know if this was for a later podcast or if I was getting, I was mentally getting ready for this if we needed to. Oh. Yes. Are you ready? Or do you feel mentally ready? Um, do you need to put your rally cap on? Mentally, you need to put that like inside out or something? Mentally, yep. We're good. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> you could both wear rally caps, actually. We could? Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Halfway through the question, you'll oh. be like, okay. Oh, I think I need a rally quite yet. <laughs> okay. 
The quality of your life is the quality of your communication. Quality of your life is the quality of your communication. Well, communication really is everything. Pretty so. accurate. And so, I mean, he segues with with yourself, obviously. With your self communication, yeah. like starting with yourself, obviously, because I mean, go to truths and things yeah. like that. Like, yeah, yeah. if you don't actually know how to communicate with yourself, how are you going to be able to communicate with somebody else? That's yeah. Fair. Like I, you've heard me tell the story. Uncle Jim slammed his hand down on the dash of the car and said to me, "When will you, when were you going to start accepting responsibility for yourself?" Mm-hmm. And that's when I started to develop, and that conversation started with me and what my issues were and how to be better and how to develop. So. I could connect with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's like one of the things he was saying was how you feel is not based on your environment because I think he's paralleling yeah, that to that. like, it's, it's really like what you're thinking inside. What we say is who you were created to be can't, the three B's can't be because of how you feel. Can't be, it has to be in spite of what other people think mm-hmm. and it can't be solely based on emotion. Right. Yeah. I, I like that. Your story. I mean, the whole, I mean, I, that's why I connected with you, that whole falling off a rope. And, mm-hmm. and then that's when you started Figuring talking to yourself. Was, Wait yeah. a second, man. Yeah, this what is, am I doing this? Or why am I doing this? Yeah, why am I doing what I'm doing? Yeah. Communication. Yeah, I like yeah. it. So then he goes on to say, nothing in life has any meaning except the meaning I give it. The label we put on our experience becomes our experience. So I'm looking for like a real life example. Nothing in life has any meaning except the meaning I give it. Yeah. So, I I mean, I guess that's more of like projecting things. So, like if something well, negative or like if something – like you're creating the I've meaning you behind your – I've heard you talk about yeah. this before. Yeah. I can connect with that and relate to that. My my deal was I want to define myself. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be defined by anybody else. Right. I, I want to figure out who I am and what I believe. And then the words that I use, I want those words to be the words I choose. Mm-hmm. And if there's a word out there that maybe the culture's taken, but I want to use that word, I'm going to use it. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 I'm going to make that super specific to me. And even if I have to take the definition of that word back, right. um, I'm going to give meaning to what I believe in, and I'm not going to allow anything else to define me. And that's the space that I started at. Um, uh, f- for example, fight is one of my mm-hmm. is one of my core values. Yeah. And I grew up being told that that was all wrong. And, and and so for me, taking the meaning of that word back and then connecting it to values was a really important piece for me. When I was told, I mean, you can't be that, you're not supposed to be that, but that was really kind of coming out of the middle of me. Mm-hmm. There are all kinds of people that I really appreciate in our culture who stand up and who are willing to stand in the gap for us. Right. Whether it be a, a fireman, a, a cop, a soldier. Um, we've had to do that in our own personal lives. So I, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in... Man, don't let other people use words and or define who you are. And it's, it is about what you believe it's supposed to be. Yeah. I, I like that. Well, I mean, again, I, I keep thinking about all this so much in projection because, you know, you come in and you are being emotional about something. And if something says something, you're just, oh, well, they must mean this in your head. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you're projecting this and it's, which is true, which is kind of like an extra step to step back from. Like if someone says something and you're like, yeah. what do they mean by that? Uh, one of you my know? core values is hope. Mm-hmm. And I've had people say to me that are going through the process, so you mean hope like, and I'm, I'm not trying to be political here, but like you mean like the way that President Obama, Obama used hope. the word hope. And right. I, I'm, uh, No, that's not, that's not the meaning I assign that word. I mean hope like the spring that moves my life mm-hmm. forward. Like if I don't have that kind of hope getting up today, I don't know how I, I don't know how I get to the next thing. And that's what that word meant to me. So I, I, when I'm encouraging people to go through this process, and even some of the words you used in your process were really specific to who you were, right. and you gave, we've used freedom, but mm-hmm. what you mean by it and what I mean by it are very different, different. things, yeah. but very much connected to your design and who you are and how you want to see that. Right. Loyalty is a big word for mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. and big I've one. not heard anybody talk about loyalty like you talk about loyalty and, and have it mean as much as it means to you. Right. So i, I yeah, that's cool that you use freedom, too, in, in the business side of things for you now, too. Yeah. Like, why is it that you connect freedom to, like, the business side of things in your mind? Well, I think it's just for, especially for around here, is letting people have some freedom and, and trust in in what they're doing and not um, being hovered over all the time and, you know, let them have some ideas. Because I think, you know, you have some people that manage some things and they are a little too micromanage 
manage that's not a word but that's what i'm gonna use <laughs> we'll, we'll, give, we'll give, take it take that word Kristen, you can look up manage you can use it however you want. want to use it and um <laughs> you know so i think for a while we haven't had that type of culture here and so we want to have that and and have that freedom to let them come up with some ideas and and have uh, a little bit of a leash and to yeah. do some things so that's super exciting to be able to do that too. We, you know? we talked about this idea of freedom when we were having this discussion and it was a really cool conversation going all the way back to, are your thoughts free? Right. Yeah. Or are they, are you, are you being led? Or are they manufactured by right. something else? What you're getting up and like, you know, what yeah. we talked about with the phone, like you get up and you look at right. the news, you look at your social media right. and you're immediately, your day is kind of, I don't want to say pushed in one way but sometimes it, it is it's it influenced for sure is, like though. you see yeah. something on the internet that or you know some type of story that you know whatever's going on in the world and you let that dictate how you feel that day and yeah. trying to get away from that and not yeah. be so connected to social media and other people's lives that really have no bearing or meaning on your life at yeah. all but you let their negative thoughts or just whatever's in there yeah go or just their agenda you know mm-hmm. their political agenda if you want right. to say that way. sure all those are you an influencer or are you an influencee yeah and i i think in order to to actually be the person who's directing your right. thoughts your heart your mind your life you got to be the one who who has that space to have free thoughts that are right. your thoughts and if you're and i'm not saying to like not look at that stuff and not be right um in the know and what's going on yeah. but don't let those things influence one your opinion mm-hmm. form right. your own opinion be able to step back and say hey i agree with this or i don't agree with this like, you do a good job with that like right even when people tell you their <laughs> their opinion on your on something you're like i don't know if i for me personally i agree with that and right. like, yeah. i've seen people kind of like right well, what do you mean but i think that's yeah. good i think people need to be challenged and i feel like now in the last couple years it's you're either so far right so far left that there's no middle ground and people can't come together and talk i feel like right. there's some people that no are out question. there that will yeah. have talks but i feel like if you're you're either so far one way that you feel like well i have nothing in common with this you're you're a radical either way mm-hmm. right and me- people can't meet in the middle and it's it's frustrating um, i don't I, I, ideology you know right. people people showing up with some sort of ideology whether it's mm-hmm. political or religious i really I really want to avoid that. Instead of instead of sitting down with a group of people and looking for what's right, yeah. mm-hmm. they sit down to look for what's wrong. Yeah, or, is... or the the first thought is what's wrong here, instead of the first thought being what's right here. And that doesn't mean we have to compromise who we are and what we believe. No, but right. be objective and look yeah. into and see what the truth is, because there's a lot of mis- mistruths out there. Right. Or or even not even mistruth mistruths, but. Yeah. People that want to sway you one way. Yeah. I mean, you can look at if you, you know, there's all these algorithms on your social media where sure. if you click on certain things, sure. certain things start to pop up. Then you start to think certain ways yep. when you're like, whoa, 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 how did I get to this? You know, yep. so I mean, I, it's crazy that that's going on now, but it is, you know, that's, that's how these people make money and that's how these algorithms work and how they keep you locked in is yeah. thinking that you're playing. But I mean, you start, you know, you look at one, mm-hmm. it, we'll just say liberal thing. And then the next thing you know, you're three, like you're far left, yeah. like crazy stuff, like right. conspiracy theory type stuff. And same with conservative stuff. You yeah. start looking, you're all of a sudden yeah. you're, you know, two or three clicks away. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that I far. mean, that's the reality of the situation now. That's so true. And that's like, it even goes back to like, I think there's so much value in a morning routine. You know, maybe not when you have three kids, that's fine, but you're not probably first thing looking at your phone and social media anyway. But for right. people that have the time and the ability, make it a point to start your morning routine in a way that's going to like, best serve you in your life and not just i mean it's it not, can dictate it's not everything. even it's not even nefarious it's it's a really good idea to have your first thoughts be your thoughts right with yeah if you go to email talk about freedom you know yeah as soon as as soon as you read the email well then now we're now we're being led and that's not yeah. necessarily mm-hmm. nefarious like i keep saying Maybe, it, but, but it's, yeah if it's connected to one your values or it's right. part of your job like sure. it's something you have to do and something that needs to be done that's different whereas sure. it's like you're just sitting there scrolling and becoming a you know right a we're talking about being intentional and using yeah. it as a tool right mm-hmm. you right. know and i think that that's the the the, the the mayhem mindset game we believe that you need to be defined mm-hmm. you need mm-hmm. to you need to live from whatever it is that you believe your truths are mm-hmm. i'm not here to tell you what those are but you should yeah. figure those out and make choices and decisions that connect feelings Mm -hmm. to those anchors in your life so you can be intentional right and the and what what is meaning is something that that you think is important we have core values at mayhem we just got in having a meeting and talking about it you know um 
those are the things that you're saying, hey, everybody here, we want to make sure that as we work and what we do, our tasks are connected to those Your values. Your personal values don't have to be that, but no. if you're going to be here and what we're working towards are those values. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what we know about the people that you've hired is they that, fit, fit that, into that mold. their values really do overlap. Right. They might not use the word the same way, mm-hmm. but if we were to sit down and, you know, Kay Miller puts out 10, you put out 10, we all put out 10, and we they would overlap. Yeah. We would really have yeah. a, a basis of, oh, wow, we we're all- kind of headed in the same direction. Right. And- well, and the really cool thing about that, too, is like, you know, as a leader in your business, now you literally get to lay the soil of what will probably influence and impact their direction and things like that. Because, I mean, surely your community is going to be affected by right. what you're doing. So, yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool to do that, too, and that you guys have those values and things like laid out now too you know yeah I, I, culturally then there's a huge issue people there's an identity crisis identity crisis I mean, yeah people don't know who they are people just don't have a clue yeah and I mean, they really spend most of their time in emotion yeah or they they don't have it figured out and they go like i was saying one of those either extremes and let right. these people influence who they are yeah. because they don't know who they are absolutely they don't know how to yeah. connect and they're like you know, you talk tribes and all that type of stuff. Right. You get into all that yeah, yeah. psychology yeah. stuff, but they want to be part of something. Yeah. Right. And we, that's we want to use it like a filter. Without question. You know, so we we can kind of get back to, and that's why I will, I honestly will say to people, you know, like, and I'm not trying to be ugly. Yeah, I don't know that I see it like that. Right. No, and I think it's great. I you mean, know? that's one thing that I really admire because it's hard for me. I'm not good with confrontation right. and that type of stuff. I'm like, yeah, sure, man. You think what? But I, if I disagree with it, I, I keep it in my head. You know. Where right. I'm just yeah. like, oh, it's not me. I'm not yeah. gonna. But. I had to create language for that. Yeah. It was be powerful. Yeah. And the, and here you go. Here's the meaning I gave to that. Mm-hmm. Say what you mean, mean what you say, take what you get. Yeah. That's what I meant. Because I spent so much time early. I really don't want to argue. That's not really what I want to do. I'd rather not yeah, but do that. You don't argue. I don't feel like you're just, yeah. you kind of give, right. hey, More this is what I think. Yeah. I don't yeah. think it, I've never been like, oh, Jim's just a, a <laughs> dick. He just but, wants to argue all the time. <laughs> but <laughs> before, before I perfected that and worked at that, yeah. really, I really was that guy. Right. I would be the one saying, you know what? You're a dumb bleep. Yeah. And this is the thing. And I was that ideologue. Mm-hmm. I was that guy who showed up. And then you're like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to hang out with this guy. <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. I mean, I don't want yeah. be that dude yeah let's try to figure out what's good here but yeah. i think yeah i mean I, it's goes back right to a communication right. where we started yeah. at is is huge and if people right. can i think people get their feelings so hurt when somebody right. does not necessarily agree with their mm-hmm. opinion right that they just fly off the deep end and so that's what i think as a com- as a country really i mean if you start looking at it, but i mean just everybody is you're right. so you, everybody's feelings are so hurt all the time where yep. it's like mm-hmm. hey we can disagree about this. Let's have a let's have yeah. a conversation about this. I'm not calling you an idiot. Right. I just don't see it that way, and I right. don't have that same opinion, or I yeah. don't have those same values. We got to figure out. How, I don't know, and I don't how know to, the answer for that. Right. But they actually, I mean, in this talk, like later on, we'll kind of revisit some of those points where they say there are solutions for those things yeah. too. But also, like, I get where you're coming from though too about not like you don't want confrontation. Some people you know you're communicating with are those people that will not listen and they're not going to change anything. So what good does it do being in yeah. like there are right. times to be the informative one. And sometimes it's like, you just have a bigger message or something, Jim or whatever that you need right. to share. But some people like, I'm not going to disagree with someone who I know is going to not going to, or it's belittle not even, your they're opinion. Not even listen. Or, yeah. It's like, it's going to bounce off them. And I just wasted 37 words of my life. It's you like know? talking to Tasia. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's like when you're when Tasia's you're, sitting over there as a as a leader, as a business owner, a leader, or, or a family member, you know, you you can look at the person that you have to communicate with, and just because they have a good heart and their intentions are good intentions, doesn't mean they necessarily want to come forward, can come forward, want to develop, right? Yep. And we got to be able to, you know, I I have to be careful about where I invest my time. Yeah. You know? And so, and, and for sure that doesn't mean that person's a freaking saint. No. Yeah. no. And that we're going to sacrifice. Yeah. So as we, we got to do a good job of where we, you know, where we sow and spend our time, mm-hmm. that person, they need to have a, they need to be willing to want to communicate and talk. And then they've really got to be in a position to say, Hey, let's communicate. And I want to develop. Right. And, and those are the kind of people that at least based on what I'm doing that we can now move forward. Yeah. You know, that you got to want to come forward to be able to come forward. Yeah. Right. Oh. Which means like you were saying, go back. St- you got to want to communicate. Yeah. You know, right. and when and, uncle Jim smashed just, that <laughs> dash and looked at me like, yeah, that was the day where I was like, Holy smokes. It's not all these other people's problems. It's yeah. not theirs. What's the matter with me? Yeah. yeah. Cause For there's sure. a lot of matter with me, yeah. you know? <laughs> so this, the next point, and this is like something that like he like harps on and says like everything 
that like hurt just keeps going back. He always says, pain starts with a feeling of loss. But then he goes on to say, you only lose something if you perceive it's lost. He says, you never lose anything. It just changes forms or transforms like water to steam however like we're talking emotional pain not y- physical pain right, right. yeah okay <laughs> because uh can i punch you in the face t- and see if this works yeah. <laughs> he, needs, he needs to come on down and <laughs> yeah do a couple of workouts um, yeah. over here yeah. but like it was such a because <laughs> it'll steal his soul yeah that's big tony you're invited <laughs> come on down open you're invitation. gonna get crushed but i i mean do you think that do you agree that pain always starts with a feeling of loss like uh, it was like like I mean, people were saying like he's like, what causes people pain? And pain? people were like, rejection. Well, why? Why is it? Because you feel like you lost someone because you're. It was just relating back to so many things, and I don't necessarily know if that's. I'm just wondering your opinion on that. <sighs> on rejection, you I know, mean, maybe you lose some self-esteem. Does pain start from loss? A feeling does of loss. Pain start from a feeling of loss. Man, I never ever thought about something like that no. before. I, no, I mean, it's right? a little like too I, deep for me. Oh, well, that's I mean, like yeah, I, I mean, losing a family member, there's pain there. Well, that's why I'm asking you guys because I didn't like it wasn't – that wasn't one of the ones where I was like – it was more of like I'm not understanding it as much. Right. So I was just trying to understand like why he says like literally the root of all of it, like that's what it comes from. We can move on. I was just wondering if you uh, had Well, you know what? It. Like look, I know for sure I've – had a lot of pain in my life emotionally and from loss for mm-hmm. sure i mean i think that's accurate i i chose to look at i chose to to define those challenges in my life as adversity mm-hmm. and then i and then i need to figure out how to triage the adversity right like like nothing good is going to come unless it comes through something difficult mm-hmm. that's the way i looked at it yeah and so I'm, i need to handle the amount of adversity that i can handle today and the things that I can't handle, maybe I'm going to do tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But I know for sure that there ain't anything good happening <laughs> unless <laughs> it comes through doing something difficult. Yeah. And then the other piece was that I, I realized that it was crazy because I screwed up for 20 straight years and then worked hard to develop and somehow it ended up okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and I think, I think back in the religious days, they would have said it, you know, all things work together for good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, that kind of proved out of my life, even right. though I'd really made a bunch of mistakes. And now, listen, it cost me. Yeah. Those mistakes it wasn't cost free. us. No, no it, for the heck wasn't free. And I look back and I have regrets. They don't yeah. destroy and dominate my life. Did you say for the heck? For the heck. I, was gonna, <laughs> I, I started to say, I started to swear. I liked it. It was a good save. But I was like, for the heck? That's a good one. Sorry, I completely ruined that moment. But I got... I got really excited and I started to swear yeah. and then I tried to pull it back and that's what came out. <laughs> I was like, man, is this something I've never heard of or heard this saying oh, before? That's funny. I like it. I like I it. I like it. Honestly, that was going to be uh, That needs to be a shirt. Fur to heck. Fur to heck. With that'll Jim's be, face just on That'll it. be yours. That Fur was going to be an F-bomb there and oh, I pulled yeah. it back. <laughs> Reeled it back in. Lakeland's Fur. right there. Uh, yeah. Cheers. Fur to heck. Trying to be PG. Yep. PG. Yep. So this was one of my favorite things, but we've touched on this because I'm like, I feel like I'm like one of the most guilty people of this. The state we're in affects how we perceive meaning. Oh, so, wow, yeah, for sure. What was I it? Mean, Sorry. The state we are in affects how we perceive meaning. So like, again, like you just got in an argument, someone pulled in front of you in traffic, you're feeling overwhelmed. So a meaning that you get is because is a stem from that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which... I mean, just is, is guilty all the time of that, you know. Well, what do you think about it? Yeah, this morning you were pretty butt hurt when I started <laughs> giving you crap about the worm. I was not. You, you that that Kristen is you. Kristen back me up. No. Was she not get all fired up this morning when I was joking I said about something the worm? And you go, don't be sensitive. I wasn't even being sensitive. You projected me as sensitive when I was happy. Mm, no, you were pretty sensitive. <laughs> what happened so. about the worm? I missed that. I wasn't there. Uh, we were loading the last bag, and I made some and. Ellie's just getting all like bent out of shape. Oh, I'm giving her I crap. did not. And so she's he getting said, all bent out of shape. About what he though? Said Based it, on no, no, no. He see, said, so she's gonna remember. So of course she was bent out of shape. You know, I don't even remember no, what no. happened. He said, "No, you were being snippy." Snippy. I can't <laughs> he, believe you'd be snippy. I know. I'm not no, snippy. we were working on the worm, and everybody should know we got we. They had to they had to make the the worm smaller. Six person worm became a yeah. four person worm, and we had to reorganize because the bag, we can't so. buy them from Rogue, and Katie doesn't do us any special dis- deals. No special be- treatment because yeah, just to be fair to everybody. Right. So we take a six person worm. I took it to Alan's boat 
covers or something in Livingston. Shout out to Allen's Boat Cover. Yeah, I think it was Allen's. Well, Canvas. Sure. Well, we may lose power here. Oh, um, <laughs> is that still going, Kristen? And they uh, they retroed our worm into a four person worm. Looks fantastic. Looks and great. so we were and loading. Then we performed surgery. We yep. did. And we were loading the bags. All the ladies and Jim, well, Kristen, Tasia, Ellie, and Jim yesterday <laughs> loaded the bags yep. for the worm we and did. filled them. And <laughs> we went to work. We had this great system. And then today was you got all show. upset <laughs> about oh, something. Oh, no. Rich had something, and I said, didn't we do a good job filling it up? Right. And you said, don't be all sensitive. What did I? What did you just say? I said. You said something about. I said didn't. I said something about. I thought we did a good job working on it or filling it you up. You did, or something. and I just made some critiques that one of the bags was too long. We had to get yeah. the fillers in there, and she got all like. Oh no! You said why didn't we? We're getting stuck in silliness here, but he. Yeah. You, it was why didn't you do the last bag? And I said, well, aren't oh, you yeah. happy that we did the other three? The other ones, and then you go, why are you being all sensitive? Yeah, right. I was just. I'm right. sorry. I guess I, I was fishing because for your... Because they had to let uh, the sand dry because it was wet from the rain. And to dry so the sand, they put it in a trash bag in a trash can with no moving air, no and, nothing and, around and, it. And we actually thought about that. <laughs> yeah. Did we not? We yeah. did. Yeah. We said and we, we were should like, you know what? Screw it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go to Home Depot and get some dry Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dry Next sand. time we assemble a worm, we're we going to throw uh, it all together. Yeah. yeah. I kind of feel like I let you down now. No, you're good. Well, it was good. So she was looking for so, an attaboy, no, 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 my, and you were like, no, hey, man, do your job. job. No, but, yeah. no, my point was we did it because we wanted to make you happy, and I just wanted to know if it made you happy or not. So that's why I was asking, was are you happy with the progress we made? And that's I guess I didn't communicate I it the right it. way. I did it because we need to get it freaking done. So we be ready to go. That's it. I didn't. <laughs> so again. I knew you would be happy, yeah. but. So I just put way too much meaning behind it. So you there did. we go. So there's a prime example of. So what was of the, the question was? If the you, environment. What was the deal? The state again? we're in affects how we perceive meaning. So yeah. I was trying to see if you were happy that we did it because yes. we were trying to make you happy. And I was happy. And you thought that I was just being too sensitive, which it probably because I was. If you look at it at that angle, right? Sh- fine, whatever. You're right. It's it's okay. So <laughs> we're good. We're fine. We're fine. It's all fine. fine. We're good. The worm got now we have a worm. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! It looks so and it, good. A brand new guys, shiny one. Yeah. yeah. And we got another one coming. Yeah. So, so in the mayhem mindset game. We say we, there's a system. Mm-hmm. Feel, filter, think, flow. You're going to feel first. First mm-hmm. part of the brain that fires them, part of the brain deals with feeling. Great. We're going to feel. We have to acknowledge it. Yeah. Then we filter. That's this idea of defining yourself, mm-hmm. changing the state of emotion to use this, mm-hmm. and then connect that to values. Like mm-hmm. be a critical thinker too. Yeah. So connect, connect how you feel and think so that you make a choice mm-hmm. that's – got both of those influenced but also has the values piece so you're not that's not just solely emotion yeah that's how we talk about that well ellie goes straight from feel to flow right <laughs> feel to flow skips all well, this and then it's like, uh, all the filter though, but it, once you have the awareness flow, of that I mean like tears <laughs> just kidding <laughs> waterworks but once i was aware of that then i felt bad then i was like oh man maybe i am and then i was like trying to fix it and then it's you Don't. know it's too much. Let it it was fine. Yeah. Like Elsa says, let it go. Yeah. Well, so here's. <laughs> is that what she says? She does. Let yeah. it go. Let it go. Yeah, is that a even, song? Yeah. Am I there? Yeah. 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 Oh, so right. this is actually a good parallel because the next point was <laughs> when someone responds to you in any form of communication, it's one of two things. It's a loving response or a cry for help. Do you agree or disagree? Wow. So it's like. Those are very drastic. So for instance, like if two people are, but it's not like a cry yeah. for help like that, but it's saying like you're needing something from somebody or you're searching for something or like exactly like what I did that I didn't even, it was subconscious. I didn't even mean to do it. And what I said was you would consider it as cry for help. help. So it's either like, or I could have just been like, yeah, whatever. That would be considered a loving response as opposed to I was, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I guess it'd be cool to hear his explanation because he'd probably have something really insightful to say. It just seems pretty narrow to me. I have, yeah, I don't know enough. I don't know. Yeah. Would you like, uh, you know, mayonnaise on that sandwich? Uh, <laughs> that's a loving. That's that's loving. A, but that would be a loving response. That's loving because you actually care about what they want on their sandwich. Wow. It's, I don't it's, know. You're looking, but it's like or, we're hey, saying. Or, hey, can I get some mayonnaise on that sandwich? That's yeah. a normal. Help. I, th- <laughs> <laughs> I It's either a normal. Help me put mayonnaise on the sandwich. <laughs> help me. That's help a you. So, basically, it's either a normal response or really subconsciously some need of yours isn't being met or you want something from somebody or whatever. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, that one I'm. I'm going to have to relook. I'm at yeah. a loss. I'm, I'm, a, I'm sorry. Loss for words. I feel like there's probably room. <laughs> I don't know that it has to be either or. I feel like maybe there's probably some middle ground there. But <laughs> yeah. I could be wrong. What the hell do I know? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That was a lot. I'm I sorry. I don't think so, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
okay, this is in the same thing. People tend to be whatever you make them. What Whatever you look for in a person, you'll find. And you get what you look for. Yeah, man, that's true. It happens all the time. I mean, without question. Yeah. That that's, seems pretty but basic. If you want to like somebody, you'll like them. If you don't want to like them, you won't like them. Yeah. I, or, I mean, You can find value if you want to find value. You can find negative stuff if that's what you're looking for. I mean, the question for. is, could you find something good in someone if you looked for it? Like, if there's someone that – it's not like you don't have to be friends with everybody, but, like, you have – the idea is you have the ability. Everybody has something good about them, right? Right. And yeah, unless you're Hitler, I guess. That's exactly the person I was thinking of. I was like, I don't know about Hitler. But, I mean, he was a good leader, right? Easy. I'm not good. Oh, whoa, yeah. I didn't mean it like that. You Sorry. know what I mean? Sorry. He, he didn't mean good. He Questions? No, 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 no. No emails. No, no emails. No. Hitler was not. I'm of German origin. It's fine. Oh, here we go. Oh, great. <laughs> Blonde hair, blue wow. eyes. She said she Sorry. hates all Jews. No, I didn't say he was not a wow. good leader. Okay, Hillary, now we're done. <laughs> Holy smokes. I meant leadership qualities. That was a joke, no, people. No, let's get off. Let's get off. Okay, no more uh, uh, you're right. That was a Hitler terrible was point. Hitler not a good, a good leader person. And not a good but, human. But, but, but listen, to, to the point, I yes. would say that he, <laughs> he, he had the ability to sway uh, an entire nation and got people did. to pay attention to him. But I, I don't know that's what we're discussing so, here. So what you guys were saying earlier, this is the point of what you guys were saying about like appreciating so, what someone's saying. So this is what the idea was. You don't have to agree with someone to find something you appreciate them. Piggybacked with we can have as groups, you and I, yes. different realities, perceived realities in our lives. For sure. Like what's going on and is different how we perceive it. It's about creating a bridge between those perceived realities and being able to learn. You you always correct me, not correct me when I say this, but not learn from somebody, but like I don't think you can. I don't like, think you can learn from everybody, but I think you can gain perspective. Okay, so you're bridging it. So you may become from two completely different realities, but you have the ability to create a bridge. Yeah. And I, I, I like this idea somebody. of showing up to be in a conversation to look for truth. Yeah. And wow, it's we're gonna die. It I sounds mean, like there's I'm getting ready to be. It's raining, raining really hard hell. in Cookville, Tennessee. I'm really glad Ellie made that comment, not one of us, because people can't hate her. They can hate <laughs> us. Yes, they can. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I was really confused. I'm sorry. And you know what? If everybody seriously gets upset <laughs> about that, if they get upset about that, that's what we were talking we're about. Right, we're joking. That's what like, we were talking. It happens all the time on the internet. I say things that I don't mean on all podcasts. the time on accident. We're fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're all fine. We think we're fine. We're fine. Depending on the weather, we might not be fine. But Ellie, what what you were saying reminds me of the saying if you get close enough to someone it's hard to dislike them mm -hmm. like if you get to know oh, them like you'll that. find something that oh, you cool. appreciate right yeah. yeah i like that it's a it's a mature perspective to try to to find value in the people that are around us i still haven't found any value in tasia <laughs> uh, we're working on that <laughs> she's still sitting right there <laughs> oh hi tasia oh, oh I, didn't. I didn't know you were here sorry wow. i thought your headphones and were she in. doesn't even have a microphone to defend herself well good here take mine nope <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> you're fired. It's not true. You can't true. fire me. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not Tasia, true. You're Tasia's up. one of the best people I know. Yeah. Eh. You're welcome. So you want a race car analogy? A race car analogy. I like NASCAR. I know. Is yeah, that what the is the 17 on your hat? Is that it's Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Oh, Ricky. Ricky gave it to me. You can't do the 17 for Ricky. I think you always do the three for Dale. <laughs> no, it doesn't really work. <laughs> Your finger is a little bent there. Oh, that's better. I I met him at the barn the other day. He was up here. Yeah. And and look, I'm not saying I don't know nothing about nothing. He's just a small, small guy. guy. I was like, well, wow. A lot of those NASCAR drivers. I don't know drivers. nothing about nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of NASCAR drivers are pretty small. Yeah. Yep. They uh, gotta fit in the cars, right? You gotta right? fit in the cars. It's small. It's. I mean, the lighter you are, the better you are. I guess so. Really? I, guess. I, I guess. mean, the dude can kill it, man. He goes a million miles yeah. an hour around a track. But it's not like a horse jockey. He doesn't no, have to like watch his diet. No, he's not horse diet. jockey small, but he's. They're all I mean, most. I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure I'm bigger than all NASCAR drivers. Well, well, I guess I didn't realize relative to weight, but you saying that makes sense. Yeah, because you can weight the car differently, huh. depending on how much weight is oh. in the driver's seat. It just threw me. I had, I've never met anybody who was a driver right. before, so. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, that was just saying. Sorry. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, focus on race what? car analogy. <laughs> 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 what is that? <laughs> yeah, what is that? <laughs> 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 anyway, oh, it <laughs> feel like part of your face went dead there for a moment or something. <laughs> like it was just saying, the more you her. focus on something, the more you get of it. If you focus on something positive, that's what you get. You focus on fear, you're afraid of it. The analogy was like when you're racing a car, 
you glance at the wall and you move on to avoid hitting it. You don't, if you stare at the wall, your car is going to slam into the car. Like you're supposed to look past it. I don't know. I don't drive race cars. Target fixation. Like, yeah. Thing. Yeah, I think that's Tell right. Tell us more. Like, What's target fixation? The thing you focus on, you will run into. Mm-hmm. Like in skydiving under a canopy. <laughs> like I literally stared at someone when I was coming in for a landing and they were standing on the ground and I ran into them because I was like <laughs> staring straight at yep. them and couldn't think about the, all, all the other <laughs> thousands, millions, whatever yeah. of feet of space there was around me <laughs> that yeah. I could avoid. Her. Well, that's what they say. Like they, that's in a lot of uh, imagery books and stuff. Like with golfers, like if you're focusing on the, the water hazard, trail. you're gonna hit it in the water hazard. How come I focus on the pin and I never hit it towards the pin? <laughs> 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 uh, that's a different deal. No. Yeah. Hey, coming up the face of the mountain. Sometimes I try to go fast. Oh yeah, of course you have to. <laughs> yeah, just to kind of because all those curves. I do. I kind of stomp on it and. Uh, and Goodness. I don't, you don't, you don't look down at the curves. You don't no, look at any of that. You look ahead look forward. and yep, you just kind of yeah. let it happen. Let the car kind of go. Yeah. I guess that's true. Yeah. When we were in high school, I used to have a, a manual, uh, five speed, 2.2 liter, four, four cylinder. It was an S10, but it was, it was an Isuzu Ombre is what they call oh, it. It's basically the ombre. an S10. An and ombre. we used to like <laughs> you race the song, see if you could get to, to the house. Oh, like, but you, you race the song? the song? Yeah. yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah. <gasps> Until I crashed. <laughs> Wait, you crashed? Oh yeah. Oh, didn't you in that turn? Yeah, one turn. turn. But that wasn't Pfeiffer actually Mountain, turn seven. I wasn't actually <laughs> racing up the hill. I just you just just wrecked that time. Oh, oh it wow. was okay. wet. Like today. That ombre. That was a that Zuzu ombre. Those early Zuzus were bad. I had a rodeo. Yeah. That yeah. was a horrible See, car. so this was actually a GM. So it was oh, it GM and Isuzu, I guess, when they first started doing the Duramax, Isuzu was whatever. They right. had like a joint venture. Right. And so it was literally from the front clip back was an S10, but the front clip looked like it had an Isuzu front clip. So it was basically an S10. Right. And it, it was my dad was so cheap. It was a meter, <laughs> like an old meter reader yeah. truck. <laughs> and my dad didn't even, like, they put, took the sticker off, and there was still paint missing. <laughs> <laughs> and I drove that for yeah. It's like, thanks, Dad. Uh, then we uh, got it repainted finally, and I crashed it. So. And then uh. Pfeiffer Mountain turned seven. So <laughs> back to the whole state thing, which not like State of the Union or, like, the state of Tennessee, but, like, the state we're in affecting, like, powerfully the moments and everything mm-hmm. else we're creating. It says there's two ways to change your state. Do you know what those ways are? I need to study them clearly. <laughs> Sunshine. Ooh, that would work for me. I don't know. I got nothing. Your physiology and your focus. There's only two things you control. Yeah. Your attitude and your effort. Yeah. Those are two things you have complete control over. So. Yeah. I, I, fix your mind and then pay attention to what you're doing next, you know? Yeah. I feel like the physiology one applies a lot to you, though, or is relatable for you, because it was just saying literally, like, the way you move, the way you breathe, your facial expressions, like... Yeah. And how many times do we, like, after a long day, it's like, I got to move. I got to go move. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's just the same thing, like, you know, changing yep. your state. Yeah. Uh, but did, this is the fact. Did you know you start to look like the people that you live with? Because so here's here's the deal. The, when you, you know when you see an old couple and you're like, wow, it's funny. They yeah. look like and it's not because they're wearing, like, blue button-down shirts. So the people you're around – you tend to mirror because mirroring builds rapport and means you trust someone. It's subconscious. You don't even know you're doing it. No, oh, usually. Yeah. You're talking like facial yeah, expressions, so, not like. So you squinting your eyes at me, I'm squinting my eyes at you because you, yep, yeah, whatever. Or so I'm going to start wearing some of Kristen's neurons, blouses. Right? Yeah. So that like, hey, that's a cute top. Let me so, wear that. Too far, Jim. So it'll literally yeah. give you like wrinkles on your face in a similar, like if you're giving them the same looks. So. I've seen people that look like they're dogs. Well, and that's the whole point. So be careful what you do. Or you're going to start looking like Gipper. Gilligan. <laughs> Gipper's not my dog. Gilligan's my dog. Your hair gets yeah. really fluffy right no. here. Gilligan's you start my doing dog. the Gilligan's, eyes like this. And Gilligan's just like you, man. Gilligan is yes. a lot like me. He's, he, yeah, he pays attention. Yeah. yeah. Gilligan's Gil's a man. He knows what's going on so around him. so well. Like yesterday when he was rolling in the dirt and you're like, no. And he looked up and he was like, oh, no. Yeah. He didn't want to listen, but he sure did. Yeah. He, he, he took my space on the wall today. Oh, that yeah, was so did. cute. I got set up. Oh, and he took the He always pillow. lays right between the two GHDs. And yeah. then you, you move the one and put your ad mat down, and he just laid down right there. And you put his head on it. I didn't even have the – Hard to take so, it from oh, Such an awesome dog. Yeah, I just moved. Gills the man. Got another ad mat. <laughs> yeah, I'm like going over someplace else. Like, I'll do these. It's just crazy else. the difference in those two, though. Like, Gilligan is so, They're like, so aware different. of, like, personal space. Like, he'll come up if you – Give him attention, he'll stay. If you don't give him any attention, he's like, all right, I'm on to the next one. Gipper's yep. like, 
I don't care. Yeah. Take this rock. <laughs> he stays yeah. there until they give him a tension. And yeah. he still stays. <laughs> Tasia and I were doing a bike workout yesterday, and he he brought a rock over, ch- tried to get me to throw the rock in the middle of the workout. I didn't pay attention to him, so he left the rock on the frame of the bike, mm-hmm. went and got another rock and brought it over for her and pestered her. <laughs> he dropped Sounds a golf right. ball on the assault runner while I was trying to run. <laughs> <laughs> and things like, trying and to kill you. Yes. He, maybe uh, he was just trying to get rid of you. I hate that That's dog. serious. That dog. Well, you know, what's, what's hard is that he's, he's, like a, he's got a sweet he's nature nicest, about him. But he's he, the nicest dog ever. But Can you imagine if you had half the determination that dog has? No, his that persistence dog just hangs is unbelievable. Just unbelievable. He will sit there panting, looking at the – see, but I think he has the rock association with a person because it's – if there's no one out there, he's not staring at a rock. It's – he sees human, he gets rock, he puts rock by human. Because what does he, he know you're going to throw wanna, it. He wants you to throw it. It's like a ball. He yeah, wants you to I'm, throw it. I'm what is saying, he doing when he goes like 200 yards out in the middle of the field and balls. just lays there? Oh, I don't know. That dog. And stares back at the barn. Lizzie or he'll just me. sit out in the rain and just look. That is the Pouring rain. He'll go out of the rain and just, just stand out there. He's oh, something dear. else. He's a golden doodle for anybody who – Insert image of Gilligan's Gipper here. Black you know, um, he has Tasia, though. Tasia cares about him. She loves that dog. <laughs> the only thing that saves that dog is he loves my kids, and he's great with my kids. So yeah. that saved him multiple times. He does times. really good with that, too. Like, yeah. they can just grab him, and he oh, pulls yeah. him up, and he yeah. doesn't yeah. care, yeah, and he, he wants to play care. with yeah, them. Loves him. He did, like, uh, the other day, Lakeland had a cookie mm-hmm. or something, and she's, she's kind of over by the bars, and... And she's dancing around, <laughs> and she's throwing that cookie out like this, and oh, she's all geez. happy doing her little girl thing. And he, I see him coming like a shark from behind <laughs> oh, her, no. and he, he timed it <laughs> perfect. She put her hand out. He snagged it see and ya. kept going, and he got oh away just in time. Gosh. She tried to whack him in the butt, and he was gone. Had that cookie. <laughs> yeah, Smooth some things are move, calculated. Man. And she just looked at that dog like, oh, man. I hate you. I hate she you. She always <laughs> says, I want to take Gipper to dog jail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, can we take Gipper to dog jail? I'm like, no, we can't. She's like, she, she's on this kick where she says hate and hate, and I can't right. stand it. And I'm like, stop saying that. She's like, I hate Gipper. And I'm like, you don't hate you Gipper. Don't hate we dislike Gipper. Gipper. She's like, we I, dislike him. <laughs> she's I love like, that that's your she's like, I love, we love I him. I love Gilligan. And I was like, but some of that's fair. Like, yeah. she sets her stuff up, and, and then, then he's he circling. Yeah. And everything. she's like, hey, get him out of here. Yeah. Like, because he's going to, yeah, he's oh. going to steal it. Oh, yep. dear. So this will be my last, like, wise comment <laughs> why <Wise laughs> com- really comment uh the last idea was uh the analogy of how you handle a rain puddle do you handle it like an elderly person or a kid stomping it yeah you can right. jump so right. like, I know what i'm doing so like an elderly person will walk around it and probably grumble while they're doing it that's not all i like elderly people i don't want to <laughs> wow. stereotype oh, them so as <laughs> i love the elderly Jeez. this didn't come out um, right but I'm that was the Papa analogy listen to this one no papa wouldn't he wouldn't grumble. <laughs> Old John Jay. I'm, okay. not, I'm gonna say that you're. I'm gonna have him listen to it so he can see your opinion on elderly people. I love that. I think I love talking to elderly I, people. I handle, They're my favorite. I handle those kinds of things very practically. I don't know that I can tie some big philosophical. No. Pro- if I'm wearing dress clothes, I'm going around <laughs> the rain puddle. If, if we're I'm about to swim or no, something, no, I'm gonna run right through the, the rain would puddle. Would you complain about the puddle? There's a pud. It's it's an yeah. analogy to life. Like you How rain big puddles is this puddle? Like can I not get to my truck? <laughs> it's like, right. Or like, like Michigan. Like Michigan, well, then I probably don't know I'd park my truck next <laughs> yeah, to it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get a boat. Good. I'm glad that was our wise moment. That was, no a, one that was a pretty here. terrible last question. <laughs> yeah. That was not the last question. We need no, a, like no. a real last question. I got. I don't please. even know what, what are we what? time are we at. Forty-eight thirty-five. All right, we got a couple more. Yeah, oh, we got a couple more. A little like. short here. Wow. That's all you had from Tony Robbins. No, I had more, but I, you guys look like you're like not feeling super deep right now. What do you have? What is it? Give us one more. Pick okay. one more really good one. Uh, I mean, okay. So, the next time you get upset set with someone, this is the first question you should ask yourself. What else could this mean? And do we know everything there is to know about this? So Back up. Sorry. I was. Rewind. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. No bad. I can't do it again. Okay. That was a one-time deal. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That was amazing. <laughs> but that needs to be like yeah, the one-minute clip. The one-minute clip right there. Next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Next time you get upset with someone, this is the first question you should ask yourself. It's actually two. <laughs> what else could this mean? Do we know everything there is to know about this? 
So, I mean, that to me circles back around to the, like... I mean, there's two sides to every story. That's really what it comes down to is, like, you've got to see it from... If you're trying to look at it from... an Obviously, if you're the person that is being offended or whatever it is, you're only going to have one side. If you can be objective and sit back and look and say, all right, why are they doing this? Hmm. And how is this really... Eff- like, there's two, there's always two sides to yeah. every story. I, I, mean, I do not... And, and this is something I really hate about politics and... Unless I understand hey, we everything. Don't say hate. Oh, no, I'm just hate. kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Something I re- how do I say it? Something no, I kidding. really dislike. You can say hate. Like okay. one's not here. Okay. Um, yeah, there's always th- there's more to the picture. I mean, people talk about stuff all the time, and if I don't know and I haven't been able to be in a discussion, I really understand the facts. I'm not passing judgment on. No, stuff. No, you can you can swing something any way you want it to. Like you can right. make it sound however you want it to sound. Right. You know. Well, and I think people say it. It even goes back to the whole perception thing because, like, what else could this mean? Why are they saying it like this? Why are they being short? Like, usually, it a lot of times it's nothing to do with you. It's their own like personal. Why are they angry about something else? And right. why are they projecting it on you? And unfortunately, like the doormats of the world. Right. Just get a lot of that projected on them, or right. you know, if you don't have the ability to control your own emotions, sometimes you can say things you don't really mean to people. So what else could it mean? Is like, wow, your day really sucks. Your day what sucks. I, you know, like you your need a cookie. Your life sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everything sucks. It doesn't suck. Okay. Something, something that's kind of similar is this idea for me was like, give up the first thought that there's a problem. Mm-hmm. I wanted to think about positive things first, and that really. That's perspective that I'm talking about. I want to shift perspective or help somebody gain perspective. So, yeah, that I, I kind of walk into want to walk into something with what's right here, not what's wrong here. Yeah. You know, yeah, and start there. Yeah. it's not that we don't deal with problems because we do. Right. But. Yeah. Well, so since you guys want the real ones, and not you know life these questions. The next part I thought was really interesting too. It's about emotions, and it, and he was saying there are not negative emotions, which I don't know if that's true. He says it's not a negative emotion. It's a call to action. So you either need to change your perception or your current actions. So if you're, if there's a negative emotion that's coming up, you either need to change your perspective about it, like recreating that in your mind, or your current actions. Like how are you dealing with it? You know what I mean? Yep. Which, I mean, that's interesting. But, it, again, like emotions can be overwhelming. So a – I don't know. For me, I guess Here. I need to do a better now we're job good. of Sorry, okay. start, say that again. We lost power and we're back. And we're, we're back. We're back. For the last three minutes. But. <laughs> three <laughs> minutos. They're going to be three great minutes, though. Yeah. What were we talking about? So, uh, it's not a negative emotion. What was that? It was a gnat. Oh, I thought you were uh, Ellie. What was gnat? <laughs> it's not a negative emotion. It's a call to action. So, you either need to change your perception or your current actions. And it's saying, stop indulging in the emotion listen to the message. So instead of getting yeah. wrapped up... Uh, I've had that last part. I don't, the other part, I'm kind of like, whatever. But the last the last part, for sure. What? Yeah, I mean, well, Look at it. Look at the truth. Look at what's, what the information is. Not just... That's because wh- you're not emotional, you know. For, I mean, I'm... A, no, I'm not, I don't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> you, you have thanks. a heart. You're not the Grinch. Like, you have a soul. It's fine. Yes, thanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, I feel like I'm pretty calculated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, yeah, but I mean, I think that's... They, we would have a lot, I don't want to say a lot less problems, if, but a lot less problems if people would stop having an immediate, it's what you talk about. Yeah, it's, the immediate emotional response to something, and that's your response instead of thinking yeah. clearly and then acting. Mm-hmm. Like, ah. Emotions literally, I, I, I tried to go, I pendulumed hard too because I had made so many choices and decisions based solely on emotion that I was like, okay, I'm not ever going to feel again. And then you're like, what the heck? Emotions give life meaning. Mm-hmm. I don't want to disparage emotions. Right. Emotions are powerful and wonderful. What would love be without right. emotion? What would winning be without emotion? What would, you know, what would uh, defeat be without the emotion? Those all give our lives meaning. I just think that we, we have to connect. That's why we got the fill, filter, think, flow. It's the same kind of idea that he's mm-hmm. espousing there. Let's let's feel. Scientifically, you're going to feel. Mm-hmm. There's no choice. You can't your get brain is going to yeah. do it. It's going to happen, and it happens first. Your f- mm-hmm. first part of your brain is firing, deals with emotion. Yep. Second part is the neocortex. It puts language to emotion. So there's, there's no way around emotion. We just need to make sure we connect it to thinking mm-hmm. clearly, and, and hopefully that's based on what you believe. Right. So that the outcome, the choice of the decision, is something that's valuable and that moves your yeah. life forward and right. not – you shoot somebody in the head or whatever comes next, you know? Well, it was interesting too. Like it was saying like, there's four ways that people respond to emotion. And then like, when you hurt them, you're like, yeah, that's, you know, so one people try to avoid them. 
Uh, two, they either endure them, I'm going to gut through them, or suppress them, just completely suppress them. Uh, three, you know the people that compete with emotion that are like, man, I had a really bad day. Let me tell you how bad my day was. Oh, so one that's upper. Like, yeah. <laughs> compete with emotion. And then there's those that are like, I, can I just tell you all my problems? I just, this, you know, my day, let me tell you. And, and you're like the downer. You're like, why? Wow, I'm sorry. You know, so it's. We all know people that that's where they live. Yeah. They live in emotion. I just thought of four different people every time you said that. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, for sure. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the take home was you just need to learn from them and utilize. Yeah. You know, and that was that. I agree with that. I agree. 100%. So there. That's, that's, that's really it. our. That's all we got. That's well, our Tony Robbins hour. Wow. We're done. That's what we're going to have yeah. to call it. We can remember. We yeah. can. There you go. An hour with Tony Robbins. <laughs> Maybe not with Tony Robbins. But not yeah. he's not here. <laughs> Tony was not here. But you guys still want to show him physical pain. <laughs> yeah, it would be cool to get him to but, come to the gym, know, though. That'd be cool. Like through exercise Tony is, is what still. I <laughs> Hey, Tony, if you're out there, come on the podcast. That'll be fun. Yeah. You can explain all this to us. He's like the hardest person on the planet to get interviewed with, I hear. Oh, really? really? Oh. Yeah. Like, Never literally. mind. Tony's been invited. <laughs> well, you don't Not only can you be on our podcast, but you can work out. Yeah. There you go. Tony, thanks for the uh, discussion points today. Awesome. We appreciate it. We do. <laughs> look at Tony changing lives. <laughs> Tony, right look, here. everybody. Tony Robbins. <laughs> right. I said that like four times. Sorry. All right. Uh, CrossFitMayhem.com. New website coming out Monday. Monday. Yeah, website drops. Long time coming. Uh, would have probably crashed, but hey, let's get it done. Uh, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Get it up and running. We're going to find out what happens. Yeah. Uh, Froning and Friends on iTunes. Give us some reviews. Uh, yeah, that's a t-shirts. Horrible. New, New t-shirts. t-shirts. Fourth of July t-shirts out uh mayhem m30 uh all in home travel workout no equipment coming out monday and then a sports performance uh geared towards athletes playing sports coming out on monday Yay! check it out all kinds of good monday's stuff. gonna be so great monday 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 monday, monday. see you guys monday see you monday, monday. crossfitmayhem.com <laughs>